Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this edition of Talking Kids Health. I'm Beatrice Canals, and joining me today is pediatric spine surgeon Dr. Stephen George here at Memphis Children's Hospital. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. Today, we're discussing spinal disorders, and in particular, scoliosis. What is scoliosis, and who's at risk for it? Sure. Well, scoliosis, by definition, is simply the lateral curvature of the spine, sort of side-to-side -side curving of the spine. But when we think about it, we sort of deal with three um, primary types, okay? Uh, the first is a, we call congenital scoliosis. The second is neuromuscular scoliosis. And the third, the most common that we see, is idiopathic scoliosis. Okay. What are the treatments available for kids who are diagnosed with scoliosis? Yes. So uh, focusing particularly on idiopathic scoliosis, there are several treatments depending on uh, how bad it is and how old uh, the patient is. Uh, idiopathic scoliosis is something that is found in the growing child. So if they have more growth left, uh, there is a higher likelihood that uh, this could worsen. Uh, in the very mild cases, the staple of treatment is just observation. Okay? Uh, as it kind of progresses, if the child still has growth remaining, um, bracing may be an option. Okay? Um, and in the mature uh, individual with these moderate size curves, observation is perfectly fine. Uh, as the curves get worse and more significant, sometimes uh, surgery is an option actually to uh, pre prevent this from getting worse uh, and possibly straighten the spine. What are the options when it comes to surgery? Well, when it comes to surgery, uh, the standard of care, the, the, the thing that we most often do is called a spinal fusion, where we focus on the parts of the spine that are most involved and we straighten the spine and put in hardware, screws and rods, to prevent the deformity from getting worse. As parents, we're often the first line of defense, if you will. We're the first ones to spot it and then go to the doctor. What are the signs that parents can look for when it comes to scoliosis in their kids? Sure. Um, it often is found by the parent, and they actually don't know what they're initially looking at. Um, this is something that um, kind of comes up out of nowhere for, for the most part. One, one year you don't see anything and the other year you notice a change. Some of those changes that you might find is that their clothes might fit a little different because uh, the curving of the spine may change how the waist looks. It actually may change the heights of the shoulders. You may see one shoulder blade is a little bit more prominent than the, than the other. Sometimes you can actually see a frank curvature of the spine. It depends on how large the curve is, the severity, the, severity, the uh, habitus of the, of the child, um, and <clears throat> the, timing, the timing that you spot it. Now, at what age can parents start to look for it? Is there an age? Typically? Absolutely. So, as I said, um, with idiopathic scoliosis, this is a condition that is found in the growing child. So, periods where children are growing fastest is going to be the time where you're going to see it. Okay, so in girls, this may start at eight, nine years old, you know, and guys probably a little bit later because they start to mature a little bit later. Uh, but again, these are just uh, averages. So it can be found on the low or high end of that. And the progression, depending on when they start hitting growth spurts, that, that can vary as well. And then when it comes to the parents spotting it, mm -hmm. they think there's a possibility, any of the signs that you mentioned, first thing, go to the pediatrician? Yeah, so usually you can go to the pediatrician because um, they are usually quite familiar with the initial screening process. Uh, there's a lot of things that may uh, look like a, a scoliosis, and it actually isn't, whether it's poor posture or, uh, or muscle imbalances. And the pediatrician is a great um, person to screen that out and um, tell you whether it should be seen by a specialist or not. When it comes to scoliosis, are there some uh, people, kids, who are more at risk, at higher risk? Or? Sure. Uh, when we think about idiopathic scoliosis, um, we know that there is a genetic component. And so it's, it tends to run in families, um, but it's not always. Sometimes it just comes up out of nowhere. You know, it's found in about 3% of the population, okay? and about 80 to 85% of those are females. So it actually um, has a predilection for females, but it is found in males as well. Um, but for the most part, people with strong family histories uh, of scoliosis, you tend to find that they uh, have a higher incidence of it. 
Thankfully, for parents who have received perhaps a diagnosis for their kids recently, there is so much help out there, so many treatments. Um, talk to me about the treatment here at Nicholas Children's sure. Hospital. Well, um, we've been doing this quite for quite a while More than here. 35 yeah. years, right? <laughs> quite awesome. We, uh, we're um, pretty familiar with seeing it and treating it. Uh, once again, um, sometimes it just takes observation. And we, we will follow up with you to see if there's any changes, whether there's a need for something. Um, sometimes there's bracing, and again, sometimes there's surgery. But I guess the overarching thing is this is a very treatable condition. And uh, kids who have this, regardless of whether it requires just observation, uh, bracing, or surgery, they're going to be totally normal. They'll be able to do just about anything, uh, regardless of what treatment they need. And, and you mentioned that uh, about being able to go back to their normal activities, which is wonderful. After surgery, about how long does it take for them to be able to be up sure. and running? Um, it, it, their, their activities actually move in stages. So the day after surgery, you're up and walking, right. which is pretty incredible. There's no brace needed or anything like that. Um, there's no physical therapy needed after surgery. Um, at about two or three weeks, you actually can go back to school without a problem. Um, and then at three months, you're doing functionally most activities of daily living without a problem. And at six months, you're back to doing everything. That's incredible. Yeah. And wonderful that you have that the technology has yeah. come so far that you're able to, to get them up and running again so quickly. When it comes to bracing, um, my son, for example, who's a teenager now, he's had friends who've had to have the braces. And I know that it's so difficult for teenagers to go through that. But how long is the process of having to, I guess it depends on the case. Yeah, so that's a, that's a great question. We get it all the time. Sure. And again, it depends on the level of uh, bone maturity of the patient. As, uh, as we spoke about before, this is something that affects growing individuals or growing kids. And so if you have a lot of growth remaining, um, the likelihood of this getting worse or the need for a brace or the time needed for a brace goes up. So it really is determined by the maturity and how the bones are maturing. So when your bones get to a point where they're more mature, we can discontinue the brace because we're confident that uh, there is enough growth remaining that this scoliosis will really um, progress into anything more significant. So is there an advantage to early detection? There is absolutely an advantage to, uh, to early detection. Just because um, we diagnose it early doesn't mean your long-term outcome would change, but in some cases it does. Because early treatment, whether it's bracing or close observation, can really uh, prevent you from making it to the next level um, and needing more. And that's our goal, to do as little as possible um, to have successful outcomes with the patient. Now, when we mentioned how long they've been helping kids with spinal disorders here at Nicholas Children's Hospital, and I said more than 35 years, the Center for Spinal Disorders, more than 35 years helping kids here in mm -hmm. our community. And I understand that some of the corrective surgical procedures have actually been developed here, and they're being used all around the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And again, uh, this institution has certainly been on the leading edge of spinal deformity surgery and taking care of kids with spinal problems. And through that, we've been very active in research and active in figuring out uh, new and improved uh, technologies to use and uh, techniques to use to um, treat this disorder. Uh, and a lot of that is now coming on the backs of some of our new imaging uh, um, equipment that we have with our EOS machine. Yeah, and the EOS uh, machine that you mentioned, uh, Maya, just, I think it's important for everyone here to notice, to know this information, that the first in Miami-Dade, first facility mm -hmm. ever to have the EOS, and the second in the entire state to have it. It really does Absolutely. help in the treatment. How so? Explain to me. Yeah, you. so the EOS machine is more than just a sophisticated x-ray machine, and I think it changes how we treat the, um, the patient with spinal deformity. Uh, the machine in and of itself does take an x-ray. Um, it does it faster, uh, but it does it with significantly less radiation to the patient. Um, actually, it's about 10% of the radiation of a normal x-ray. And this is quite significant when you're dealing with uh, maturing boys and girls and um, patients who may need multiple x-rays over their life to, to track these uh, disorders. But in addition, it does more than just that. It also allows us to just take a, a two-dimensional image and turn it into a three-dimensional um, figure. And that's important because scoliosis in and of itself is a three-dimensional deformity. And for so many decades prior, we had to understand the deformity using two-dimensional figures. And so being able to turn 
uh, these images into a three-dimensional uh, image allows us to better understand the deformity and is really changing the way we understand and treat uh, these deformities. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff on the horizon uh, for the treatment of scoliosis due to uh, the advancing technology that we have here. And a really good team, I understand. Talk yes. to me about the team at the Center for Spinal Yeah, Disorder. and so I think... Um, here at Nicholas Children's, we really pride ourselves on a team approach to this. Um, and from the second you walk in, the technician you deal with, whether it's in radiology or on the floors, the nurses, the surgeons, the anesthesiologists, they are all specially trained to do this. They do a lot of them, and they're really good at it. And we really think we provide better care because we have a dedicated team that we know and trust. And for that reason... Uh, it really helps patient outcomes, which I think at the end of the day, we're trying to improve day in and day out. Absolutely, to have better outcomes. Anything you'd like to add for parents, again, who are facing this diagnosis of scoliosis and perhaps they have all that misconceptions yeah. that are out there or, or fears? Sure. So um, it's, it's a very natural feeling to be concerned uh, about anything being wrong with your child, um, especially when it has to do with the spine. But this diagnosis is one, as I said, that we smile to because we think we, we can actually treat this at this stage so well um, that it, it doesn't really pose a setback to the, to the individual, to the patient. Um, early detection is important, and seeing a specialist and understanding your options is very important. Sometimes you can get bogged down in all the information that's on the internet and reading and thinking that, oh, they're going to need this or they're going to need that and their life's going to change. But at the end of the day, these patients do very well, very quickly, and they really have no restrictions and they return to doing everything they love. Um, so, uh, again, um, certainly stay connected with us and see a specialist if necessary, and I think everything usually turns out fine. And I love the message, stay off Google. Yeah. <laughs> so, so often, we, yeah. we immediately, and I'm guilty of it as well, but sometimes it's just worse. Go to your pediatrician, follow the steps, go to the specialist, and the great thing is there's so much hope and so much help for the kids yeah. out there. Thank you, doctor, for joining us today. For Absolute giving us so much pleasure. Information. Yeah. And for those of you out there who would like more information about the Center here for Spinal Disorders or about scoliosis, all you have to do is log on to nicholaschildrens.org slash spine. We hope to see you again on Talking Kids Health. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, doctor. Thank you very much. But, you know, back in the day, it's true. Absolutely. When you would hear scoliosis, it would be, oh, my goodness.